everybody. Hello. I hope that we have some lovely people joining us here. But today we are here on National Numeracy Day to have a chat with Sunblocks founder, David Skaggs. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank Yay, you. Happy Numeracy Day. Yay. So we are just going to jump straight in. It's um, eight o'clock for you, isn't it, David? It is, One yeah. o'clock. I've got my little helper here. We're going to jump straight in with a question about yourself. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, about your background and, yeah, your interests? Sure. Um, so I I'm associated with some blocks and most people that meet me see me as kind of a math guy and somebody who makes children's uh, educational toys. But what a lot of people don't know is that I got my start in uh, video game design. I actually have a, a master's in video game design and that's kind of where this all began. Uh, so uh, like a lot of us, I, I struggled uh, in school uh, and you know, I graduated from a pretty competitive program with the help of a lot of friends, you know, tutoring me through programming and different things. And so when I got out of school, I just wanted to give back. Uh, I lived next to an elementary. And uh, so I went in there and I just asked if they needed help. And they paired me with a student uh, named Elijah, who had a little bit of problem uh, with mathematics. And so, uh, you know, we would meet and tutor every day for about an hour. Uh, and he responded really well to games, but I just I couldn't find a game that, uh, you know, that, that really filled all the gaps in his, uh, in his learning, you know, so, uh, uh, so, you know, there's things like, you know, he would be doing fractions at the time. I think he was in the third or fourth grade and, uh, he was making some mistakes on things like multiplication and some basic addition. And so he thought he wasn't getting fractions, but really it was that his core foundation wasn't strong enough. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I set out to like do some, you know, remedial math work with him, but it just like he, when you're not getting it, you know, boredom sets in, you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, it's just something that's, uh, unexciting. You don't want to, you don't want to do it. Plus to add to that, you know, he, we would tutor after school. And so, you know, the bell would ring, everybody would be out and he is quite, you know, he loved soccer. He wanted to be outside, didn't want to be in, in with a, a tutor. So I really tried to make it fun and I, and I'd bring in a lot of games and, uh, and, and I think, um, it, you know, so, you know, and I brought in all kinds of games, everything from like your physical, uh, you know, physical tiles and cards, uh, and, and that's really where I could see that, like, there, you know, there wasn't an issue with his ability to understand. He had just fallen behind because of, you know, a lot of different circumstances. He was obviously very, very sharp, very fast with the games. And, uh, and so I said about, you know, I said, hey, I'm a game designer. I should be able to make something that's fun and exciting. And so I kind of set out to do it. And uh, it, it stumped me. I couldn't really think of anything for a couple of weeks. And I just was thinking about the core of his problem. Like, okay, well, when I think about math, how do I add up numbers in my head? And, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, usually I, I have tricks like you know, I'll complete um, a combination of 10. Like, so if someone would say like nine plus, you know, seven, I'd be like, okay, take one away from the seven, add it to the nine to complete 10. And then it's 16. Uh, and, I was thinking, well, how could I represent like some of these easy tricks that I do mentally uh, in a game form? And, and as I'm <laughs> stacking these in my head, I'm like, oh, that's just like building blocks, you know? And that's kind of where the initial thought came from. I shared it with one of her, his teachers kind of as a, a passerby com a comment in a teacher conference that I was with. And she was like, wow, that's a really, that's actually a really good idea. And I was like, oh, okay. And so that, that encouragement from Mrs. Mar Martinez, uh, shout out to her uh, uh pushed me in that direction and and uh and then kind of the rest is history you know as they say that's amazing that's absolutely fascinating and you make some really important points there like you said if you don't have that key knowledge then to build upon the more tricky aspects of mathematics you're going to struggle so really yeah right. getting that knowledge and something fun to help you to help and still is really important and actually i've got three children um one my eldest son sounds a lot like elijah in terms of his learning his 
you know, he's kind of fallen a little bit behind with the maths and um, needing to grasp that knowledge and understanding. Um, and so what, what spurred you, like your, you said it mentioned about your, your background in computer gaming. Oh, what was the question? I didn't catch it. Oh, no, we've lost neither. Uh, we, <laughs> I guess one thing I wanted to say uh, to kind of uh, expound off of that um, is that I think that uh, oftentimes, uh, too, uh, uh, when uh, kids, are we all here? Um, oftentimes, too, like when uh, when kids, uh, you know, do uh, get behind, you know, then it can be like, that becomes the thing that they focus on. Like you're bad at this, you know, let's, so we need to do more of this and more of this. And, and that can be really detrimental. Just the idea that like you're bad at something, um, you know, like uh, for instance, uh, Elijah was actually really, really good uh, in English. I remember, you know, growing up and having a reading problem. And I remember, uh, you know, looking at his work and being like, wow, you know, I thought I thought he was much more advanced at, for his level than I was. But, you know, when your focus is on what you're bad at, uh, it, it uh, you know, that can that can really put a damper on your interest for learning something. So, Anyway, sorry, we lost you for a second. What was your question? Sorry, no, sorry. I was just um, mentioning like what, what spurred you to think about kind of the visual aspect of maths because I think that is really key. Uh, I struggle with maths as well and I find it's the visual that I struggle with. So how did you kind of link up at, like whatever I do needs to be quite visual in order to engage and to ref to show Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I can answer that. I guess, you know, I, you were asking about video game design. You know what's funny about video game design school is that, like, you've got a lot of teachers. Sorry, this is a little bit of a tangent, but oh, it's kind of funny. You have a lot of teachers that come from the video game industry. They've played games. They've made games. And you, and you go into create games and you think, oh, okay, these guys are just going to get it. So you make your game. And I found that, like, the teachers were, like, worse than anybody. They were worse than kids. It's like they had to be just handheld through the whole process. And, uh, and so that really kind of got me off on that, on the mindset of, like, teaching. Like, as a game designer, like, if you're creating something as classic as Mario Brothers, well, how does the, uh, how does the player know, you know, how to get walked through that whole experience? There's all these small little aspects um, of uh, just, like, how does, it, how does it become intuitive? Uh, so your question was, um, you know, how did I get into the visual aspect? I think just through testing, you know, working uh, with Elijah, uh, I, we just tried a lot of different stuff. And, uh, you know, as fun as some of the digital games were, I think more of the learning and application happened when he was doing hands-on stuff. And so that just, I just yeah, I just do testing. Yeah, well, they help. I have to say they help me, especially through lockdown through lockdown because of COVID and the homeschooling with my eldest, they helped me phenomenally. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. I, so, yeah, go ahead. I've done many conferences and I think just playing the games has actually like, it's improved my like, you know, my, 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 my core a little bit, you know? So it's just like, as I just, I process numbers faster just from playing with them. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Um, so my next question is, which mathematical concepts can Sunblocks help with? Because if I've got my mini set here, adding the adding and subtraction is quite like straightforward in terms of they equate, the numbers equate. So I'm not going to do a very good job here because I'm one, trying to balance it a little bit. But it's quite visual with the adding and subtraction to see which numbers are equal to. But how what other concepts can it help with what are the other kind of ways in which you can use them to problem solve with math uh sure yeah there's there's a lot i think um i mean what we've really done is just represented numbers in, in a tangible way where the value is tied to the height so um i mean it's kind of like i mean it's, it's just numbers in a different form so you could really do just about anything with them from you know elementary concepts like addition subtraction like you said um, so let me see if I can adjust this a little bit here so we can kind of come down a little bit. So see if we can see here. Let's see. 
it's been, uh, you know, I used to do these, um, I used to do these uh, presentations at, uh, at conferences uh, all the time, but it's been a while since, since because of COVID, obviously. Oh, yeah, of course. That's why we're going to put you on so the spot later. I know, I know. I, know. I feel a little rusty, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, let's, and I remember like in conferences, you've always got to turn the numbers like so they're opposite for you, you know, because on the camera. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can mirror it. I've just, I, you, I, you can change the camera. I even can swap it around. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's Would okay. you prefer it? No, it's good. All right. I just like thinking backwards. <laughs> here. Okay, so, you know, the basic concept, obviously, then like, you know, there's a 10, it has a height. There's the nine. The one uh, is the only block. Like all the all the uh, numbers could be seen. Uh, you know, they they squash basically vertically, so that they uh, they represent their height. You know, the one is the only one. It's kind of like a unit. So, but if you add the one on top of the nine, it's going to equal ten. You know, and same. And then subtraction is just the inverse operation. So, you know, if you were to subtract one from ten. You know, it would be, it'd be nine, or or uh, conversely, if you were to subtract nine from ten, it would just be one, right? Uh, and you can add them beyond ten. You know, you could. I mean, you just represent like eighteen would be represented by like like that. You know, so and uh, and actually, along with that same concept, let's see, we got uh, you know, so you could do like multiplication. So we could do yeah, and, and consequently division so let's say we have 12 right well you could say what are the factors of 12 so you could say okay well let's say four times uh three times four yeah and uh you could do let's see what other what other what other factors we have guys help me out here factors sixes. of what two sixes threes four threes, threes. It's just so helpful it being so fishy, wasn't it? And then, of course, you got the twos and the ones too. But I won't, I won't set them all up. But like, uh, so you can, you know, with the, uh, you know, this this teaches multiplication. It also teaches division. You could say, like, okay, what is half of twelve? Well, number bombs, would, isn't it? That would just mean if you were to divide twelve into uh, two pieces, if you were to divide twelve into two pieces. What would that look like? It would look like six. That's what you're saying. And, and having that real concrete understanding of what that means, you know, it's, it doesn't like, if you were to say, okay, if we were to have, you know, uh, and, and there is actually, it's interesting. Uh, I didn't realize this until I started teaching, but there is a debate on like how, you know, whether, which, uh, you know, whether, whether you say uh, three, the number three times four or four, uh, uh, four times a number. So, but um, I think I think mostly it's uh, uh, you know you you would say like oh why am I struggling with the terminology here? But uh, anyway, you would say like four times four uh, uh, four times uh, three. So if you were to say uh, you know so there'd be there'd be four there'd be four threes here. I think I got that right. Hopefully. Uh, and that, but that's not to say, so to say that there's four uh, times three is not to say that there would be three times four, you know, that's different. You know, so it's important to kind of understand that. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's really, really. yeah. And then you could do fractions too. Uh, you know, they have like, you know, if you were to say, you know, if you were to say, okay, uh, you know, what is, you know, what is one third? So if we were to say, this is the, the denominator, you know, one third plus you know, plus one half you can't you can't add those together they're just because the uh the denominator or you know the uh, how you're splitting them isn't the same so you'd have to get a common denominator and that you can do that just by getting a common height there's just proportional reasoning you know when you so if you say okay we're looking for a common height we can just say okay this is one half if we add another one half you have instead of one uh, one of two, you have two of four, still one half, uh, but they're not the same height. Uh, and then you could scale this one up. You know, one third plus one third is still uh, one third. Or, 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 sorry, if you stack like one third on top of one third, you're scaling it up. So it'd be two sixths. 
it's still one third. It's just scaled up. At fifty one hundredths is still one half. Yeah. Uh, but you don't have a, the same height, so we just keep going. You know, you eventually find you know common denominator, and then once they're of equal height, then you can add in the numerator. So you can take the pieces, you know, add the two pieces over here, and one third plus one half is you know five. five this seconds. is the yeah that this is what I need to brush up on my fraction work and and helping in that because it's such so handy to have it in such a visual way. We just had a comment from yeah. Jessica. She said. I've used them for number bonds to 10, but I haven't thought about using them for bigger numbers and multiplications, et cetera. We'll give it a try. Thank you, she says. So yes, there's so many capabilities with these fun little blocks. They are so, so great. Um, I've had another comment here from Beth. She says, we are huge math fans here. My little boy is obsessed and we love some blocks here. All the love for sunblock. So, um, and we, like I said, love them too. They've helped me yeah. with my eldest lockdown. They've helped me with my middle son, like prepping him ready for school. He is like a little sponge and he loves math, but they've just helped to kind of, um, to move him on a little bit. Um, you know, like I said, ready in preparation from school. They've been an absolute amazing resource. Um, so, Talk to us about some of the benefits of the blocks. Like this, if we've talked about them being visual and hands-on, those are really key learning aspects, aren't they? So, so the, yeah, talk to us a little bit more about that. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think the um, I think the biggest um, I think the biggest benefit is the repetition that kids can get with the fundamentals. Uh, you know, I recently started taking uh, if, if I can just uh, you know, talk by analogy. I recently started taking uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, and I'm taking it from a world champion. Like, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's famous. Uh, and he, everything he teaches is gold, but like I, after a year of it, it's like being able to, um, replicate that, you know, in the moment is so difficult. And I, and it's, you think about, okay, the teachings flawless, it's flawless teaching. This guy's the best of the best. But it, uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me that like if you don't repeat something like hundreds of times, you just can't pull it out of your toolbox, you know, when the time comes. And, and the same thing that comes with math is that like a lot of these concepts the kids might get in school, uh, you know, but if if you're not getting enough repetition, even with just simple uh, addition, uh, it's it's harder for them to to pull that out and to, and you know out of their toolbox and to use that uh, in in short enough time so that they can get other concepts. So like yeah, you know we've got a bunch of games. If you if you see uh, you know there's like 80 cards that come with the big set, uh, and you know there's different games. You know we have like some some are more instructional. You know it's like you know take uh, you know you'll take combinations of four and kids are learning how to break down you know, bigger numbers. Uh, and then they'll take that information and they'll, they'll play like the ladder game where they'll have, you know, an entire number on one side, like a, a whole number, like a six, and they'll break that down into two numbers. So they're learning how to break down numbers and then they'll build a ladder up as high as they can. And that can turn into a competition, which is fun. And then they'll do like, you know, the, it, th with that, they can build like, uh, like a tower. Uh, and so, uh, I'd say the, benefit, the biggest benefits uh, are just group play, hands-on, having fun, and then repetition, repetition on the basics. Uh, in, in, in a way that doesn't feel math, you know, it's like, yeah, down, yeah. yeah just sit down and play, um, like play. sitting down and playing dolls with your kids, build a house. I mean, there's so many opportunities yeah. for you to talk about like equality and like, okay, let's build a roof, but we have to have all the walls the same height. Oh, we ran out of tens. Like, how can we come up with a combination of of ten so that we can complete that side of the uh, the wall? Absolutely, I cannot honestly communicate how much I wish that these were available when I was growing up. From from someone who really struggled with math, so it makes me a little bit emotional. And also, my mum, who actually was a teacher but also struggled with maths we it would have saved so many tears and tantrums over it because i, I didn't get that core understanding which, which meant that i didn't i wasn't able to put together you know the all the kind of 
further on further learning maths because I didn't have that basic understanding and yes you know I had that times table poster on my wall and we tried doing the times table sing songs and stuff like that but it it just if I'd had these resources here to play with we've lost her again oh, no. <laughs> but yeah no I agree with her it's I mean even though yeah I have a maths degree you know but um even that and i think i would have it would have made a big difference yeah um, with uh, how quickly i can do things mentally and how much confidence i have particularly you know even though i've got this uh, master's degree still <laughs> still don't feel confident when people put me on the spot and i know that's a lot of people a lot of people in the higher math feel the same way so it's, when, when put on the spot it's still the confidence is just not there yeah Sorry, I'm sorry. Technical difficulties. Can you? I can hear you all now. So sorry about that. Yeah, Charlotte was talking about confidence. Uh, I, I, I can't uh, iterate that enough, uh, I, or reiterate that enough. I think that that she touched on probably the, the most important thing. Uh, if I could give away anything to kids, is just like these concepts aren't aren't difficult if you're not getting them it's your it's it's not your fault uh it's just being delivered in a way that you don't understand and so just take a step back take a deep breath uh and don't worry about it uh and and know that like and hopefully some blocks gives like a, a an alternative way to like help give kids understand uh some of these basic concepts yeah, absolutely. Thank you for stepping in there. <laughs> uh, so in terms of one of the quite common questions that we get is what age are some blocks targeted to and and who like what age group are they good for? Like how what's the longevity there? Um, so I wondered if you could fill us in what like, you know, how what age group they're geared to. And I'll say my experiences. Uh, sure. Like. Um, and it's interesting, like I, I get a lot of people that are like, oh, our, so some blocks are good for uh, for struggling students or for kids with special needs. And I'm like, no, they're good for everybody. Like, I, I mean, if my kid so if I had kids and they were geniuses, like I would still want them to be engaging with some blocks at a very early age, you know, and then I could, you know, if they were prodigies in math, you know, maybe that would maybe that cutoff period would be, you know, around seven or eight, you know, um, but. I'd say the I'd say you know for the average student between four and seven, four and eight is uh, is a really core period for that. That being said, like at age two, wow. you know kids can kids can stack blocks and build and start to learn what the what a number the names of numbers and recognize uh, symbols and and then I've had I've always I've been surprised at how many people you know just up to teachers you know i mean i've had we've gone to some educational fairs where there's like lego and things and we get a lot of uh high school kids that will come over and they just want to they just want to do stack challenges you know so uh that's fun that's really yeah. fun being and, and see that's the, the number one thing that i was concerned about when i was creating some blocks was like is it going to be fun enough is it going to just be seen as like work and math as usual or is it going to be fun and so moments like that like we were in philadelphia and there was uh, a bunch of uh middle school to high school kids that came over and they just wanted to like compete to see who could stack like the highest and i mean we got pictures and everything but i was like wow that's really um that's really great to be next to like a booth like you know lego and and still be able to garner attention from you know different audiences so sorry Absolutely. if i missed the question what was it no no that was it i'm uh, just my personal testimony i've got my eldest he is 11 he enjoys using them. They help with his homework. He's a little bit kind of not necessary at his age for maths, but they help him still. And he also has been enjoying, he had these out the other day with these cards. So he was giving these challenges a go. 
Um, I've got my middle son who is five. He's very switched on with maths. He enjoys building with them, stacking with them, giving himself, you know, like sums and to help, they help him to answer his sums. And I also have my 18 month daughter and he enjoys knocking down the towers. So, I mean, a full range there, they get the use out of them. So that's my personal testimony. I think they're wonderful for the whole age, you know, ranges. And I, like I said, they helped me um, during lockdown, trying to get my head around stuff and teaching them, teaching maths to my, my elders. So yeah, all round amazing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I use yeah. them in lockdown a lot as well to get my daughter to do her homework. How old is your daughter yeah. now? I forget. Well, no, the, the eldest is, uh, she's going to be 70. Oh, okay. You've only met the youngest, I think. She's three now. She's three, yeah. I, well, I, she was a baby when I, I met her, so yep. she was like an infant. Yeah, really, Aww. she was a tiny baby. <laughs> yeah. Tiny yeah. Um, amazing. Um, my next question, and this is another kind of frequently asked question, we get this a lot, is which set do we go for? There's quite that's, a range, isn't there? Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a great question. Um, man, I, I really do like the mini, but uh, I would say my heart goes out to like the original. We've improved it so much in so many tiny ways. Um, I think, so I guess let me talk a little bit about some of the differences. So the original one, um, you have all the dimensions. Uh, it's meant to be like, so as a toy, if you're going to stack just randomly, uh, I want kids to naturally be moved towards calculation. So no matter how you stack the blocks, so like a one, if it were to stack on its uh, side, uh, so if a one were to stack on its side like that, it's going uh, to be basically a, a, two, a unit two units, you know, it's, it's uh, two units thick. And then uh, it's all the blocks are going to be four uh, units wide. Uh, so it, no matter how you stack these, you know, you're always going to add up. They're always going to have something that perfectly uh, aligns. And I really like that about the, the larger blocks. You can see, you know, they, they're a little more expensive. Uh, they're a little heavier. Uh, so they make a little bit more noise. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, the mini blocks, um, oh man, I don't have a, I don't have this. Oh, the um, mini yeah, those, those are the mini blocks. Uh, I have a package here, but it's not open. I don't want to open it. Um, but the, the that's what we did. What's the same problem I had is that I, we just went to look for one. And that's good news for anyone watching is that we found some, sets of uh, starter mini blocks when we went oh, uh, we found amazing. some sets some uh, with because obviously we've been out of stock for a while and we won't have any back till july i believe but we have just found a few sets and i've put them on the website but oh so amazing news so the getting, there's really not yeah. many get your minis whilst you can uh the minis i uh i do really love how they turned out we made them thicker though so like you know proportionately you've got you know, four wide, uh, two deep, and then the the number tall, right? Uh, on the mini blocks, yeah. it's actually I, on the mini blocks. I think it's uh, two and a half. So it's like there's a there's a half. Unit. It's like two and a half. So I mean, yeah. So they're thicker. They're proportionally they're thicker, and the reason is is because uh, the number one aspect, it, you know, play is integral to some blocks, and I want kids to be able to stack it play with like a building block. Mm -hmm. And if it were too thin as a smaller number, it just wouldn't have very good stability. So uh, by increasing it, its thickness as a smaller block, it, it um, it's still very playable, but um, it does lose a little bit of the, uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's still, I mean, it's two and a half. So if you were to put two and a half and two and a half would be a five, right? Too, too thick. Uh, two, two of those thick would be, would be a five. So there's still a lot of calculation in there, but, um, yeah, the smaller blocks, obviously a cheaper price. Um, they, uh, they work really great on a desk. They're not going to make, uh, you know, the, where the sun blocks are probably better for like a floor, uh, toy the mini, the minis are great for the desk and, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. They are so much fun. Thing. My little one and my other half both have like major stacking competitions with them. 
um, and it always ends in absolute chaos all over the floor. But <laughs> <laughs> they're good for all ages, even 30. Oh, we should. That reminds me um, when uh, I was in Germany, we did, uh, you know, for, for a, a group of guys, we did a we did a um, a challenge. Some of these are just engineering wise. They're just fun. But we'd be like, OK, so if you were to take um, a, make a bridge. So like you have to take two two blocks, two supports. Right. And you would say, OK, how can I bridge the distance between these uh, with with uh, with no gaps? So you could say like, okay, well, you know, you could do, obviously you could do a 10, right? And then you would measure, you'd say, okay, well, what is the distance between here? Well, this would probably be like a nine, right? You could probably, you could probably put a nine in between there, right? Well, okay, well, what if I did like, what if I did like, uh, you know, two nines, you know, and I, I kind of balance these and I put like a, it has to have a, something on top. And then there's just so there's like a roof, so it kind of goes like that. It can't be it can't be just split down the middle. You put some. Then you could measure it and say, okay, maybe that's a ten, right? And we and the whole idea was to see how far apart you could get the supports with just counterbalances and balances. It's a very fun engineering little challenge. Maybe maybe we'll give it. Maybe we'll do one of those and do a giveaway. But um, yeah, I won't tell you. But they they got it. They got it pretty far apart. Oh, wow. That's that's fascinating, actually. Like you said, the kind of more structural side of it, trying to counterbalance. Yeah, that sounds like a fun, fun activity to get involved. I might try that with my eldest, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, just keep it fun. I, I you keep it fun. It doesn't yeah. all, all we have to be 100 percent math all the time, you know. Definitely. Um, yeah. So and actually something that I like about because I'm this lame, something that I like about the minis is that when the kids are finished playing, I like stacking them so they will line up in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's work. It's a chore, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's a little complicated. I like it. I like it. It's satisfying. Yeah. It is so satisfying seeing all the all them line up. And, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I have one last question before we we'll throw you into a little mini maths challenge. Uh, my last question is, and um, you may or may or may not, I don't know, but is there anything new potentially coming in the pipeline? Maybe some more activity cards or something else? Uh, yeah, we, we already have, um, this is not released yet, but we already have probably uh, 50 to 100, maybe more cards done. I'm just very picky. I'm very picky on the games. So I, I throw a lot of them out, you know, I have people that I work with and, <laughs> And uh, we, I mean, we did that same thing on the originals. So actually, I, I probably have over a hundred that, that are already done, uh, but we keep throwing them out. And then I, I want to have like a set for, uh, you know, tr addition, subtraction specifically, and then multiplication, you know, multiplication and, and division, and then something yeah. for subtraction. So I do have cards. We'll come out with something this year as far as new card set. And then uh, there's a couple other things that like. You know, you guys talked about some of the things that you like to do, you know, like stacking them in, in the box and things. Uh, I'm trying to, I just, I'm trying to come up with a couple of toys in one, you know. Uh, so, I mean, that's the hard thing is, is it's like, I want to give people a lot of value for their money. And I don't want to just have like, oh, here's add-on A, here's add-on B, here's add-on C. Yeah, if I could just yeah. add it to like the original package and not charge people more money, that'd be ideal. But it's just... It's just trying to figure out like how to how to uh, design and engineer everything so that uh, like for instance the wooden box is more useful. You know, it, could you use it for more than just uh, putting your Story. toys? Yeah. yeah, that's so true. Amazing. Well, we'll keep our eyes peeled for those. That's very exciting to hear, and I'm, we're always up for more challenges. So excited to see some new cards. Okay. Well, and this is where I hand over to my maths. Gosh, this is a bit crazy. Mary, do, you know do you know what we should have done? We should have, um, I should have got you to race against Dave to solve something, but <laughs> oh, never mind. Dave would win every time. I don't know if anyone else is ready, and I haven't, I haven't got, yeah. Well, anyway, I know the answer, so it's, it'll be cheating. Um, get, maybe get cheat. Sophie to do it. Get Sophie to do it. <laughs> I don't know what's on the spot. I'm just crying. 
So I, I, I've, right. only got, so we, I've only got one yeah. challenge, but um, I, I, uh, you have to do it with some blocks. So you have to show us why you're, do, why you're doing it. All right. You can't just blurt out the answer. So what is one third plus one fifth? Okay. Uh, we'll do this. So we'll go down here. And we'll do, uh, do. Where's the timer? Here's, here's my time. Can you see? All right, here we go. One, so one fifth. We got the uh, numerator here, the denominator here, plus one third, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, so uh, we're looking for a common denominator here, and if we're going to find a common denominator, I'm going to start with uh, the one-third because it's shorter than the one-fifth. So we'll add, we'll uh, scale up the one-third to be two-sixths. Still proportionally, it's one-third. Not the same height. So uh, let's see. So, scale up to two, two-tenths. Let's scale that up to three ninths. Three is one third of nine. And uh, that's still shorter there. So we're going to keep scaling that up to four twelfths. Huh, I'm out of fives. There's only two. <laughs> One second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you threw it right in the end there. Has anyone got any questions whilst we continue with this sum? Put them down below if you have any questions. Oh, and then we're out of a threes as well. What we can also say is that if people are watching this not live, please submit your questions to Dave and we will we sort it out for you. And then you would add, so we've got 15 and 15. We've got. You need to five. move the screen up a little bit. We've got. Whoa. So we've got 15 and 15. Three fives. We've got five threes. Same height. So we're going to add the five ones over here to the three ones over here, and you're going to end up with eight fifteenths. So one third plus. Wow. <laughs> One third plus one fifth equals eight fifteenths. Perfect. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, so a reminder to just submit your questions to us if you have questions for Dave, and we will um, go through them and come back. Definitely. And also a reminder for me, if you visit our Facebook and Instagram, we are currently running giveaways to win an original set or well, a set of the original sun blocks, a starter set. So please go and check that out. It's, it's that like honestly, can't speak. So any more value than they're an amazing resource. Um and when does yes. that competition close though? It closes. Ah, that's oh gosh, now we put you on the put me on the spot. It I think it's Saturday that it closes. Let, Which let would check. be the twenty first? Twenty first. But let's double check. It closes at midnight on the Friday, the 20th of May. There we go. So that is the last chance to enter. But we have, yeah, there's been a lot. It's been a very popular giveaway. So people want the sunblocks and I can't blame them. <laughs> they are great. Right. Well, let's just check and see if there are any questions. I right. just We've just got one. Oh, sorry. You jump in. Um, really random one because I just feel a bit geeky about numbers. But what's your favourite number? Good one. Do you have a favourite number? Oh, are you asking me a question? What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so three. What's your I would. Three, three is always my lucky number, actually. Oh. Yeah. Okay. A nice number. Not that. You not that you asked, but my middle son's number is 10 because when I got these out of his room, I cannot find where the number 10s have gone. He's like stashed them somewhere else. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah, kids like the number 10. I don't know why. Maybe it's because there's less of them. I don't know. Or the biggest one. Uh, yeah. It's big enough yeah. to be a weapon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> oh, well, Beth has just said no questions, but this is such an awesome way to learn fractions. And I wholeheartedly agree. I don't, I don't have a brain for fractions. I don't understand, but it's nice to see it visualized in that way. It really does help. So yay for some blocks. And um, just to quickly round up, just to say a massive thank you, David, for... for uh, um, joining us this National Numeracy Day, um, yeah, answering all our questions, showing us the capabilities of Sunblocks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been it's been great. I hope that you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, we lost that. Oh, we lost Eden just as we uh, right. Uh, I, I I yeah. I we need Eden back before we can stop How it. It being you need to. You need so those internet providers. You know, during during COVID. Eden like, lives in the West Country, where um, <laughs> inter internet's witchcraft. I was going to say they, they, give you, they give you those promos that are like super fast speed, and then after six months, they they know you're all streaming Netflix. So they, 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 they drop it down. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. Thank you for bearing with us, everyone, and thank you again, David. We will catch up with you again soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks for Thank having me. You. Thank you. Thank you.